Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at a pen that is somewhat difficult, and the reason I say it's somewhat difficult is I couldn't actually find that much information about it online, including the price. But it is still an interesting pen, and I think as a piece of history it would be interesting to feature this pen on my channel. So here we have... <coughs> my apologies. A pen made by Bexley, US pen company, pen maker. Uh, and this is a special edition that was made for the Scriptus Pen Show, that is the pen show held annually in Toronto, in Canada. And that is one of the few Canadian pen shows, very few, some would say, I would say for sure. And Bexy made this special edition. Red ebonite, hard rubber, so you need to be a little careful with water and light on this pen. It was limited to 150 pens. Why? because this pen was launched at the 2017 Scriptus show and in 2017 the country of Canada existed for 150 years. So, that makes sense. Um, my friend Simar lent me this pen. It's his property, so I should be very careful with it, especially because Ebonite does not bounce. Don't ask me how I know that. Let's go over the past the pen. I can't give you a price, simply because I don't know, and I can't find it. This was a pen show special edition pen, so it's not that easy to find. If you want one, that won't be that easy. It's the way it is. But again, as an overview of a product, I still think it's interesting to talk about this pen here. So, I will cover the parts of the pen, do a writing sample, and I will tell you what I like and what I don't like about this pen. Let's do it. Okay, so here we have the Bexley Scriptus pen. It's a pen made by Bexley for Scriptus Canada, 150 years, happy birthday, etc. Um, some instructions on how to use the pen. And some silica gel, which one should not eat. And then of course we have the pen. Let me zoom in a bit. And then take out a pilot parallel. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a Lamy Safari right now, so this is what we're going to have to do as a size comparison. Doesn't fit, does it? There we go. Let's talk about this pen. So, as I said, it's a little difficult to find these online. There is only 150 of them, which is not super limited, but it's definitely limited. And uh, that means that it's not that easy to find a whole lot of information. Made by Bexley, Bexley's in the US, and made of red ebonite, which is very pretty. I, I will try to show you that up close. It has a very nice... I wouldn't really call it a texture because it's quite smooth, but it has it has a nice visual appeal to me. Now, you may be able to see there's a very, very faint inscription there. Um, it does say... I, I can't read it as I'm holding it. Uh, it does say Scriptus Canada 150, and it does have a number. This is number 77 of 150. So what about the parts of this pen? Well, there's the finial on top. And you have this clip with a little ball which rolls. I did see that this clip they made a somewhat large opening for it so it actually moves a bit. Barrel tapers down ever so slightly and you can open the pen by unscrewing it. Um, I'll be very careful because it's someone else's pen, but it does post, and then it's a, a pretty nice size. I would be inclined to use this posted, because it's not a huge pen, and it's very light, because there's pretty much no metal parts on it except for the nib and the clip. Uh, the rest is all uh, ebonite, or I'm pretty sure this section is not ebonite, but it's plastic. I have not scientifically, scientifically verified this. Section tapers down, flares out a little bit. Very classic shape. These threads are really nice and not sharp. And then we have a steel nib. The steel nib uh, says, uh, has a sort of a, a fancy curvy B, that's that thing at the top, B for Bexley. Uh, it says Bexley below that as well, and F for fine. Steel nib, plastic, feed. That's it. The pen is fed through cartridge converter, in this case, a converter. That's it. Let's see how it writes. Uh, 
Uh, the nib is a, as I said, fine steel. And the ink is very simply good old fashioned Waterman Serenity Blue. I find this a pleasant writer. If you have seen one or two of my videos, you know that I tend to prefer a broader nib to a fine nib. But as fine nibs go, this is a very pleasant one. Very smooth. Writes well, does not skip. I appreciate that. Wetness. Not massively wet. A little bit of line variation. Not a flex nib, um, but you can very gently squeeze out a little bit. What about reverse writing? It's possible, and it's pretty smooth. Sometimes nibs get very scratchy that way. It's very smooth. You see it starts to run dry. I would say maybe between one and five words before it really stops writing, but if you absolutely need that finer nib than your fine nib already is, you can turn it over for, and to go from fine to extra fine. It is a possibility. Okay, let's see what I like and don't like about the Bexley Scriptus 2017 pen. Okay, what do I like, what do I not like about the Bexley Scriptus 2017 pen? I feel like I don't really have a whole lot to say about this pen, but there are some things I really like. It's a special pen, right? It's special because it was made for this pen show, which is nice. It was special because 2017 was an important year for Canada, 150 years of being a country, which is cool. And uh, so it, it kind of commemorates those two things, not just what used to be the only Canadian pen show, there's, there's another one now, but, but that's kind of nice, but also that, that birth date of the country, that the nice, um, is it a coincidence? Not really, because they plan the pen show every year, but like, y you know what I mean, like it, it, it has those two things, confluence of two things, and uh, let's get very poetic about it. Here's another thing, it writes nicely. The fine nib is very fine. A very fine nib, but it writes really, really nicely. I'm not a huge fan of fine nibs necessarily. I prefer broader nibs, but a good fine nib is very useful. And uh, I find this to be a very nice, smooth, very fine nib, which is particularly impressive given that how fine the nib is. It doesn't have a lot of tipping material, and yet they've managed to make it very nice and smooth, which is not always the case with such fine nibs, so I think that's really nice. I can't comment on the price. I really try to find one online so I could at least give you an aftermarket price. But I have the feeling that those people who bought these pens are holding on to them, probably because they are a bit special to them. So that's, I think, the one downside I can mention. I mean, I could talk about things like, yeah, it's a bit smaller, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit finer, um, but, but, but that's a bit of a personal thing. You have to be careful with ebonite. Don't get water on it the pen can discolor, and that also means you have to be a bit careful with ink, because ebonite, it, it, it could stain if you get ink on it, but of course the section is not ebonite, so just something to be aware of. I think the biggest downside to this pen is that if you like it, it's hard to get. It's simply not very available on the, the, the aftermarket, so that's the way it is. Having said that, I think uh, it's a very interesting pen, and it was very enjoyable for me to, to try it out because I knew it was launched. I didn't get one in 2017, but it was it was fun to play with. So thank you, Samara. I appreciate it. I hope this was useful, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye.